What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate, we're talking about the CDS Current Environment Connector, and we're going to look at the List Records action. So List Records, uh, we covered in a previous video for the other CDS connector, but this one has a few extra options that I kind of want to go through and show you, because it is a lot more powerful uh, and a lot easier to use it from my perspective anyway. So let's take a look at it. So in Power Automate here, I have a flow which is a solution flow, so it's inside a solution, and therefore I get access to the CDS current environment triggers and actions. So we have a trigger here, which is when we do an update on accounts and we update the telephone one um, field, we will then trigger the flow. Then we can click on new step, type into the box common data service, uh, choose the common data service current environment connector, and then we get a list of actions. So down here we have one that says list records. So we click on that. It asks me for the entity that we want to list. So in this op in this instance, I'm going to choose accounts. Now I can just run this right now, uh, and it'll just return everything. But what I can do is I can actually query certain things. So we've covered some of these in other videos. So I've just done uh, videos on the select query, uh, the filter query, uh, and the expand query. Um, so these are like the select query allows you to limit the number of properties you retrieve. So you can specify the fields that you want to bring back. The filter query is an OData style query. So you can um, write in your, um, your filter uh, using OData in here. We've covered that in a previous video. Uh, we've also covered the expand as well, so we can get related entities, again, using OData. And uh, there is also uh, order by, so you can actually sort these in a specific um, order. So order by um, order number, for instance, or quote ID, or created on date, something like that, or order alphabetically. Um, the fact check smell query, so we can actually paste, copy and paste fact check smell directly into this query and then retrieve details back. So that's a super powerful tool because it's so easy to write fact check smell. It also includes top count, so this is the number of records that you want to retrieve. Uh, if you don't put anything here, it will retrieve all of them, but you could limit this to only retrieve, say, 200 records at a time if you don't want to sort of hammer the system or, you know, you don't want to accidentally trigger this and have it run on more than those records. There is also skip token as well. So this is another OData um, style programming thing, which allows you to essentially put like a bookmark into a, um, into a, a list. So if you... Um, run this over sort of like you know 10,000 records you don't want to run over the first 10,000 again you want to start from where you left off that's what the strip token allows you to do so let's take a look at this so uh, we've got all these things um, these some of these are um, available in the other CDS connector but this fetch XML one is not available in the other CDS connector this is specific to current environments and that's what I want to take a look at today so I've shown you previously how to build FetchXML um, using the FetchXML toolbox, um, FetchXML builder in the XRM toolbox. Um, but this time I'm actually going to show you how to get FetchXML out uh, an easy way as well. Um, so you can go over to your directory or your CDS environments and you can click on the advanced find button uh, at the top. And this opens your advanced find window. This is the most powerful tool inside of any Dynamics or any CDS instance. So this is what I spend a lot of time training people on. It's what I spend a lot of time going over because it can just give you and, and give you so much um, back and give you so much power to uh, to an end user because it all it drives your views, it drives your reports, it drives your dashboards, it drives everything. So in here, I can build a, a very simple uh, fetch XML query. So it's just defaulted to the view that I was on. Um, and all it's looking at is where the owner equals current user and when the status equals active. Um, I, could, uh, I could change the columns in this. I could add other columns into it by going in here and clicking add column. Um, I could add a count number onto here, for instance. And that goes on at the end. And I can click results and I can see what that data looks like. Now, now that I've done that, what I can do is I can click this button that says Download Fetch XML. So if I click on that, and we go to Show in Folder, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag it into my Notepad++ that's here, open it in there, and there I've got some Fetch XML. So if I zoom in a little bit. 
So this is fact check smell. So this is the the um, proprietary uh, you know coding reporting language uh, whatever it is in inside of Dynamics, uh, and this allows you to build out um, you know your your queries uh, and and return information back. So. What this is saying is this is saying that we want to look at the account entity, we want to bring back a few fields, we want to order by the name, um, descending equals false, which means it's ascending, um, and then the filter types uh, are where the owner ID equals current user and where the uh, state code equals um, zero, which means it equals active. But I didn't write any code, I didn't write any of this, um, I just created an advanced find which any user can do. So that's it, and then all we can do is just copy this into our uh, window. No, nope, that's the wrong window. Uh, that's my videos. Um, so we have to XML and we just paste this into here. Now the other thing you can do is you can still use dynamic content in here. So if you had uh, a specific thing like where the owner equaled maybe the person that triggered the flow or you know where um, some of the data that was like today's date etc. You could paste that into here um, and you can uh, build this fetch XML with dynamic content as well. I said you can still use the uh, fetch, XML, uh, fetch XML builder in the XRM toolbox, um, but this is just another way to do the same thing. So let's test this out. So we'll click test. I'll perform the trigger action. And then what we need to do is we need to go back to our uh, Dynamics instance. We'll choose a record and then we'll update the telephone number. Let's do that. Hit save. Uh, yeah, ignore and save. And we'll go back to our um, flow. And we did that after it started running. And if not, I'm just going to hit number again just in case. Uh, there it ran successfully. So now what we've got is we've got this triggering and then we've got uh, the list of actions. So we don't actually see anything here. So the reason we don't see anything here is because um, it's pulled it back, but um, the output um, is just saying, yeah, I pulled, I, I pulled back the list of records. Like, what, what do you want from me? So it doesn't actually list the records here, but what we can do is we can, um, we can add this inside a loop. So what we can do is we can insert a control. Nope, wrong control. Insert control, not condition. It's the same symbol, which is what annoys me. Control and, and condition are the same thing. Um, a condition is a type of control. Uh, we can have an uh, apply to each loop in here. We can put the output from the list records in here. And then we can add an action to just have a compose step. Uh, and we can just use the account name, for instance. Account name. There. In there. So what this will do is this will, um, when this is updated, it'll list the records and then we'll go through each one and we'll um, specify right we want to get the account name out. So we'll click test and this time we're going to run from the previous action because I've just done it. We'll click save and test. Uh, and if I give this a minute it should run through. It will go off, it will query the CDS instance, it will save and test. Uh, it'll query the CDS instance, it will um, pull back a list of active uh, accounts that uh, where I'm the I'm the owner of them, and it'll write them into um, an output here. And as we can see in the apply to each, we've got the first one, which is Acme Incorporated. Next one, a data incorporation, next one, D365 Decommitted. So all I'm doing is I'm just I'm just listing all of these. So although I've listed the records, I then didn't do anything with it. So that's why I didn't pull anything back. But as soon as I put it into a compose action uh, and add an apply to each round, which which Power Automate would do automatically anyway, um, we can now actually start to use this data. So every time you're uh, retrieving uh, more than one record, uh, unless you do anything specific um, to, to limit the number of records that you get back, um, as in like you may want to list records and then return the top one entry, you're always going to have to use an apply to each to um, to get this, to, to get your outputs through. So you need to create something like this to then flick through and do things. Uh, but yeah, there you have it. Um, this is a quick and easy way to, um, to list records from the system using uh, fetch XML.
Um, and yeah, so one thing, uh, another thing you'll um, you'll note as well is that when you run this, the fat check smell. I don't think it it takes into account these uh, these properties. Let's uh, let's test that and find out. Uh, I don't think it takes into account those properties. So if you do want to just return uh, certain properties, uh, you'll need to include them. Actually, it may do. It may. It seemed to suggest it was doing that there. Um, but yeah, um, if you want to. Uh, if you want to make sure um, that you're only bringing through some properties, you can edit that select query like we showed you in the previous video. But there you have it. So the fetch XML um, option in the list records is an absolute lifesaver for me. I am much more comfortable with fetch XML than I am with uh, OData. So using advanced finds, using the fetch XML builder in the XRM toolbox uh, are big time saves for me. Allows me to get the data I want in a format that I understand uh, because I've been working with fetch XML for a long time. It's very, very simple and very straightforward for me. So that's why I, I tend to use uh, this this connector and use this list records. So what do you guys think? Is the fetch XML query inside of the list records something that you use all the time? Or do you still use the OData stuff um, from the other from the other connector as well as in this one? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. It's much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.